Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also good morning. So today I wanted to go ahead and give you guys my day two update with the RF Chieftain and I gotta say we are blasting these new changes to base life on items and the new changes to block making it more accessible makes the build feel even better than last league on a budget. There is a slight change I have done and I won't put it in the POB since I'm kind of blasting right now but basically when you're at the transition point on going block based if you don't have the enlighten notice in the POB there is one you can instead drop determination so that you're able to use stone so that's flesh and stone and then tempest shield so that way you're trading off the term going block based and then getting your mitigation back do note if you're using stone or flesh and stone you do have to be very close to the target so you do want to be tanky in general uh, with that being said you just have to take the reservation nodes here and you are pretty much good to go but with that being said let's go ahead and jump on into a map then we can go ahead and cover some gear upgrades and kind of how I progressed. So here I have a T16 Toxic Sewers. We're just going to do like a standard Alk and Go here. This is a brand new Atlas tree. It's based on my Atlas tree from last league, which is a Harbinger Atlas. It's a Harbinger Beyond. It's actually a very rippy Atlas. So you'll notice that I have a um, flask on here that I normally would not run like in my POV and stuff. What that flask is, is that flask is called Forbidden Taste. And you don't need to use Forbidden Taste. There's a lot of personal preference when it comes to PoE. Essentially, what this is going to do is it's going to make it so if any damage can bypass my defensive layers, I can pop this flask to instantly heal full. That's the primary thing for it. had a big penetrate. Oh, never mind, he died. Bismuth deposit. I gotta say, the bismuth is a pain in the ass with the tornadoes, but when you're block-based, it's not really a problem, which is nice. Is there a monster life roll on this map? Oh, there's not, no. Ooh, bobbles. Those are rare now. There's a tornado, right? I mean, it still does a bit of damage, but with a better shield, it'll be shrugged off. Also, for people who are going to ask, I am on my mid-mapping filter right now. So you can see that located right here. However, I will be working on making a new filter. So I will basically split this filter. So I'll copy it and then I'll rename it um, like kind of like Super Endgame. And then that way I can start working on that, that so that this filter here doesn't get touched. And then I'll make that one public on the website. Okay, map is done. Really enjoying it. You can see the block really makes it such a nice cozy layer of defense. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my skill tree, then we'll talk about my gear. Skill tree is pretty normal. Um, nothing, I haven't really done anything different. Uh, I did go into a cluster jewel. So my cluster jewel is a... Uh, widespread destruction, burning bright prismatic heart. Don't buy this. It's like 12 divines or something. It's not actually that crazy. Even just using an eight passive fire cluster with nothing will still get you access to two jewel slots and medium clusters, which is the main purpose of this. Remember that the main reason you want a cluster is so when you want to drop this down here, you can get more damage back by going into a cluster. You can get AOE back by getting burning brights and you can get life nodes back with flow of life and actual jewels. Speaking of jewels, um, I have a jewel here that I bought for 20 chaos, and then I had to spend two divines because I wanted to get the max fire res to 2%. Um, this is what's giving me the ability to have 90 max fire res while wearing Annihilation's Approach. We'll get into that in a minute. Um, the rest of my, again, a large part of damage with RF does come from jewels. So jewels are a very big source. You can see in the POB notes, I have some info on that. But everything here is pretty straightforward, I would say. So let's talk about the gear. Um, so to use this cluster jewel, I wanted to drop spiritual aid. Dropping spiritual aid is a bit of a doozy. So I went and bought myself a fractured dot multi weapon. Unfortunately, because of you know player driven economy, these are now very expensive. But the purpose of this is that you buy it, you alt spam, so you have you have twenty dot multi. You alt spam for plus one fire. Then you regal hoping for a prefix. If it's not a prefix, you do suffix the prefix bestiary, and then you can remove it if it's like 
kind of screwed up, but I have crafting guides for this. Um, and that's how you get this weapon. And that way you're able to drop spiritual aid uh, because you don't have a minion roll here. And then this allowed me to go into the cluster. So over here, I've got Frost Blink, Life Tap, and Tempest Shield. Normally, I don't need this, but because I'm not taking this reservation note, I have literally zero MP. Uh, my helmet was actually pretty lucky this go around. So standard process, I bought a Elder Base. Uh, I went and did Reforge um, Fire at Harvest. So that's going to be right over here. So Harvest, Reforge, Fire. I then pulled the level 18 burn, the life regen, and fire res, and then I also hit conk effect. I then closed my eyes and slammed um, life, which was kind of crazy because 126 bonus life there. Over here, we got trap and mind, fire trap, awaken swift affliction, and life tap. Over in the shield over here, this shield is actually one of my weaker pieces. Essentially, I bought the base, and then I came over here, and I spammed uh, reforge life. I do believe fossils, pristine fossils, are probably better for this. And I did that until I got the Recover Life on Block, and these are the mods we happen to hit with it. So this I want to recraft because it's only 3%, and I'd love a 5% max on Block Shield. Here I have my Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, and Life Tap set up. Remember this one, you want a low-level Life Tap so that when you Shield Charge, you're instantly proccing your Life Tap. Over here on my boots, I have Annihilation's Approach. I would not recommend getting these early. Uh, my sustain is really bad right now. It's enough for me, but a lot of people will not find this to be comfortable. Annihilation's Approach give you permanent adrenaline and allow you to swap your Pantheon. However, if you swap your Pantheon, you do want to make sure you are taking Unwavering Stance, uh, and then you can make use of a two-point Jewel Socket. I haven't gotten this yet, but I do need to because I did die from getting stunlocked. I would just recommend you use boots like in the Path of Building as Annihilation's Approach are pretty expensive. They're a, there's none listed, and I bought mine for four Divines. Over here, I've got Punishment, Life Tap, Enduring Cry, and Blood Rage. Mortal Flesh takes you very far into the game, so I'm actually slowly buying out a <clears throat> Fertile Catalyst to add onto my Immortal Flesh. The minus flat physical damage taken from attack hits helps a lot in a mapping environment. Uh, gloves were crafted just like on my website. I bought Fractured Life Regen. Uh, then I started using Chaos Essences. Uh, then I hit Decent Life Rolls, and then I Exalt Slammed um, Fire Res. I choose to put my Auras usually in here because they get the plus one gem, um, so I do have to like redo this. Over here, I have my, uh, basically the Sapphire Ring, which I purchased. Um, basically, Fire, Chaos, Dexterity, Life Roll. And then this ring I need to swap. It's basically double Chaos Res with Dexterity, but it has no life. And then, of course, the Amulet, which is a uh, source of damage. So I have plus one Fire, Dex, Dot, Multi, Crafted Life, and then we Anointed for our Endurance Charge Generation, which you can find located over here. That's pretty much the character. Uh, flasks are pretty standard, so they're all gain two charges. This is movement speed, armor, a chance to free shock and ignite, and reduced effective curse. Um, so I just need to automate this one. And then this flask is kind of like up in the air. If you don't have good chaos res, I'd put chaos res flask here. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm having a ton of fun with the league mechanic. I'll have to make a video on it. We actually uh, have quite a few things maxed. I've got mining over here maxed. I and I think, yeah. is it the sh ships I maybe maxed? I didn't even notice there's rewards here. Oh, let's not talk about that. Yep. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. So I'll catch you guys all later. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays except for today. Today we're streaming at twitch.tv slash pox. See you guys all tomorrow.